So when you're going to outline an argumentative essay, you want to keep in mind that it should be five paragraphs for eighth grade. And we're going to start with our introduction, uh, three body paragraphs, and one of those is going to be our counter argument and our conclusion. So let's start off with the introduction here. So our introduction, we're going to start off with like a blue, a hook. So we want to talk about some background information about the issue, maybe an emotional anecdote, like a quick short story to make a point, a personal connection, something about the issue. And then in the introduction, we make sure we're clear about the issue. The issue is whether or not students should be required to stay in school until they're 18. Then you need to make sure you state your claim. Your claim does not have to be the same as this one that I am going to write here. I'm just going to pick a sample claim and then you can go with whatever your claim is. But I'm going to give I hopefully what is probably the maybe one of the common ideas. So a claim that you might make is that in today's world with the needed education, students should have to stay in school until 18. Right. And so that would be the claim. The claim is what is your opinion? And you want to make sure you state that re really clearly. OK, then you also need to make sure that in your introduction, you kind of preview your key reasons. So, you know, you can first you got to think about your reasons and then make you can go back and do that part like, you know, later on. But what are your two reasons and kind of say two reasons are and then state them in, in one sentence. So one reason, right, might be that it sets higher standards for students and parents. Now, this reason um, is a, talked a lot about in source two, right? So in source two, um, I might go get some exact quote from source two. I think in source two, it stated it really clearly, um, this idea of ha higher standards. And so it starts off kind of in the middle of the quote, so you can put the little, uh, put it in quotes and some little ellipses, and then it says, it sets the moral imperative so that students, parents, and educators become committed to the idea that each student will in fact graduate, and you would end the quote. So in your outline, this is where you can put some of the evidence and some of um, the information that you gathered to help support your reason. So, um, you know, this, quote really explains that um, when states set higher ages for um, being allowed to leave school, that um, that changes kind of the mentality of all the people involved, the students, the parents, and the educators, and that they are going to be more committed to the idea that students are going to graduate because they have to stay in school. Um, another piece of information um, that I found it was that when the required age of education increases, so does graduation, so do graduation rates. So that would be something else, some other piece of evidence. You can go pick your own evidence. If you want to go find your own sources, um, I'm going to let you do that. But um, just keep in mind, right, is it a reliable source? Where are we getting that information from? Uh, it's If you can't do that, just use the, what is given to you in the book. Then we're going to think about another reason. So... Um, and we want to think about a way that we can transition to a new paragraph. So some simple transitions are like another reason, a second reason, or secondly, or in addition to um, higher standards, right? Um, a higher age of required education leads to better opportunities. So what are some examples or evidence that were in the text for that? So if it leads to better opportunities, where can we find that? In some of the sources, in multiple sources, it says that um, students are less likely to drop out. I think that was in source four. Um, if the age of required education is increased um, the, in the graph, you can, or in the, um, this was also in source four, people who don't have high school diplomas have lower job satisfaction. Um, in the graph, it says that graduates make more money. That's in source three. So you can find lots of information in these sources about um, better opportunities for students who stay in school and that when the age of required education is increased, more students stay in school. So there's lots of evidence to support that. Um, so you can kind of find the evidence that you feel um, best supports your opinion. Now, if you have the opposite claim, that they should not be required, then you're going to have completely different reasons and you're going to look for completely different um, sources. I could argue either side of this based on the information that was given. So 
Um, I'm not saying this has to be your argument. This is, I'm just thinking the most common one. So this is how I'm going to try to help you out. So um, just whatever your claim is, your reasons to support that. Now, the most important part that you are supposed to kind of work towards in eighth grade and improve on is looking for counterclaims, arguing those away with a counter argument. So the transition might be like some may say or others may argue. So some may say that students' lives are not all the, all the same and they may need to work. And there's other counterclaims you could use for this um, essay. You could say that some may say uh, require students to stay in school is going to cause discipline problems because kids don't want to be there. So whatever that counterclaim is, right, so whichever one you choose to um, argue against, and you can put multiple counter arguments in. No one's saying you can't, but you just have to have at least one. So um, then in the body of that paragraph is when you're going to have your counter argument. You're going to argue this away. So for example, if the counter claim that I address is some may say students' lives are not the same and they might need to work. Then I would argue back, my counter argument would be that dropping out is not the answer. Requiring students to um, allowing students to drop out is not the answer, that they're going to make less money in the long run. And students who really need to work, they can work on evenings and weekends to make the money they need to use to help their family. Now, let's think about the conclusion. So in our conclusion, it should mirror or should be similar to the introduction. So the issue should be like restated. Don't say the exact same thing. Say it in a little bit different way. So, for example, is mandating students to stay in school until age 18 a good idea, right? And then you're going to repeat your claim and your reasons. So you're going to basically summarize your main arguments. So in this essay would be students should be required to stay in school till 18 because it's going to lead to better opportunities and it's going to... Um, make parents and teachers and students expect more of themselves. Now, the final kind of like big thing, the blue of the conclusion is what's called a call to action or emotional appeal. So in an argumentative essay, oftentimes we're trying to get people to feel something, to do something, to think, think something. And so we want to see if we can get a sentence or two to really bring that out. So. For example, in this one, we might say something like, let's keep the education standards high for all students and teachers and change the age to stay in school till 18. So um, that's kind of like the final thing that we want to make sure we include in our argumentative essays and in a call to action. And um, I hope this helps.